Hello, hello. We are fresh from chapter nine, intros and conclusions, and now we're on chapter 18, group speaking. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite chapters just because I, I like working with other people personally. I know other people don't have quite the uh, social, uh, I guess, streak within them that I do. So group speaking in the context of public speaking can be very, very, very hard for some people. Hence why I typically have us do it first. So it's out of the way. Granted is the one that most people dislike the most. Um, but then we get it done. Then you never have to work really in a group again, at least not for anything big. Well, I guess if this is the online class then you're never really working in a group. Um, fair enough. So some of the concepts we talk about within this group speaking will be a little bit different if you're in the online section than it will be from the face-to-face -face one, but some of the things will still be applicable. So you'll still have to find a time to meet. You'll still have to try to avoid social loafing, stuff like that. So let's get started. So there is a distinction between teams versus groups. This is a group project, not a team project. If you've been in my small group communication class with me, then we've talked about this a lot because groups are just three to five people interacting for a common purpose. Once you get past 15 people, it gets too big to really be considered a group, then it's just you know a mass of people. Um, and then a team is a coordinated group. They are a group. All teams are groups, but not all groups are teams a coordinated group of people working together to achieve a specific common goal. So you have sports teams working together to achieve a specific common goal of winning the game. Then you have group projects of people who are just kind of thrown together or say, ah, they look nice enough, we'll work with them, who all have different goals and different ways of going about it. So, what are some situations that you might use team or group speaking? So those will be more personal to you. Sometimes in professional settings, you will have to work in teams and groups, and then you will have to give presentations over this project that you guys were working on, this product that you have come up with, so on and so forth. You actually, I don't know. The group speaking, I think, might be getting a little more common, but now since we've gone to a lot more virtual stuff with everything that's been going on um, in the past couple months with the coronavirus stuff, that might be kind of going on the downhill slide. We'll, we'll have to see how it works out. Like, you know, maybe you guys will go through your work lives without ever having to give a group presentation besides in school. Um, but one of the important things about group work is having coordination. You need to be all coordinated together. So you can't have one person like off in tin buck two, you know, trying to do their stuff done. You have to kind of reel them in and say, hey, you're part of this too. Like if, if the ship is sinking, we're all going down, guys. Um, but if the ship is doing really well, then we're all going up. Um, so you need harmony and rapport to be an effective group or a team. So harmony obviously just means, you know, you're not at each other's throats and rapport in this case just means you have to kind of be able to talk to each other. You have a very basic acquaintanceship or a basic friendship that you can build upon and say, okay, well, I may not like this person very much because there are times where you will not like the people that you are working with, but still have to treat them with respect and work with them to get something done. But I can talk to them politely at least enough to get the stuff done. So you want to be a cohesive group, all working toward the same goal. Um, and your goal is to not have any social loafers. So a social loafer is someone who does not put in as much effort in a group as they would individually. So an example of this might be, you know, let's say you have a superb A student or whatever. We'll just use a student example. On all of their individual assignments, they do awesome. They are great but you put them in a group and they don't put 
you know, jack effort in at all. They are being a social loafer because maybe they think the other students, you know, aren't as good as them or whatever, and it's going to be a disaster anyway. So why put in the effort um, and just kind of like, you know, you guys do whatever and blow it off. So, but it can be any, anyone can be a social loafer. So if you have that happening in your group, um, we do have a group reaction paper at the very end to say, you know, oh, these are the roles people played. And if someone happened to be a social loafer or if someone just showed up on the last day and said, here's my, you know, three slide contribution, but didn't work with the group at any other point, then you should write about that in your paper because I'm the only one who's going to read it. So I can say, you know, okay, you know, these three people in this group, they worked with what they had. They did a really good job, even though they, you know, up until the last day, they were missing the introduction or the conclusion or this entire piece of the presentation. Um, so they get full points for that. And then the other person might get some points docked. However, on the group speaking assignment, everyone will get the actual same grade on the speech. I will just assign points probably extra in the group reaction paper or in another assignment that I will create to help even those out if you do have someone in your group who is a social loafer who brings your score real down. Like it might reflect on your actual grade for the assignment, but it should not reflect in your class grade if you do that. Um, so you have different roles in your groups. Obviously, you've talked about a negative role, a social loafer. Um, you have other individual roles. So if someone wants all the attention on them or they're being a jokester and trying to get everyone off topic, those are more individual roles. Um, but those also might be more things that you are just individually responsible for. So if you have to bring a prop to your presentation, then that might be your individual role. But it could also be considered a logistical role. So you have task roles, which are more logistic. So guidelines for communication. So who is setting up how we're communicating? Are we communicating by a group text or Facebook Messenger or Instagram DM or just Google Doc? Uh, when are we meeting? Um, how are we getting information? Is there someone who's really good at research? So maybe we say, okay, we're gonna run everything by them and say, hey, can you double check if this is a good source? Or someone who's really good at APA style who can say, yep, your APA is good, throw it in the thing. How are we gonna share information? Are we all just putting everything on a Google Doc and a Google Slide and making one person put it all together? Or are we all putting our own individual stuff in and then at the very end saying, okay, we're gonna select this theme and then it all changes to match that or whatever. Who's doing the PowerPoint? Who's setting up equipment if necessary? Does everyone have access if you're on the online class to a camera, a microphone, some way to get themselves seen or heard? Does everyone know how to sit or stand? Does everyone know that they shouldn't have too many things distracting in the background? Like, I, I hope my cooking apron isn't too distracting. Um, who and what kind of maintenance roles do people take? So these are more relational roles. So building and maintaining relationships between leaders and group members. So maybe you have a couple people in your group who don't really get along well. Someone might take a maintenance role in being a little bit of a mediator and saying, okay, well, obviously you guys can't sit next to each other. So let's flash back to third grade and say, you go sit at this end of the table and you go sit at this one and the rest of us will be in between to kind of make sure that you guys aren't getting at each other's throats for no reason. And then leaders. I don't assign leaders for this project. You and your own groups kind of decide amongst it yourselves. And someone typically just kind of falls into a leader role. Uh, Cause typically there's one person in the group who just has the personality where they naturally fall into it. Um, but they can be an authoritarian leader where, you know, their word is law, it's my way or the highway. If it doesn't get done my way, then may as well find a new group, right? Um, they can be participatory where they are helping out with everything, um, more democratic, letting everyone have a say. Obviously the ideal leader is more participatory than either of the other ones, though each work for their own situations. And then the last is laissez-faire or a very quote unquote like lazy leader where they just don't care. <laughs> They're like, yeah, you guys do whatever. I'm just gonna chill over here. Like, I don't care what we get on it. 
for a project like this, you probably don't want a laissez-faire leader. You probably want a more participatory one who can, who, who is helping out. So it may even seem like your group doesn't really have a technical leader if everyone's contributing, though some people may take the lead in different things. And then decision making and conflict, you probably will have conflict of some sort in this project. Not all conflict is bad um, because conflict can help people grow. So just be willing to compromise. You know, everyone has a piece of knowledge that you do not. So everyone knows something that you don't. So you may not be in the right. So be willing to compromise, be willing to cooperate, um, be willing to discuss your strengths and your weaknesses and the strengths and weaknesses of each approach you might be taking. You know, maybe someone is really not good at putting together PowerPoints because they are just not graphically inclined at all and they're okay with just putting, you know, black text on a white background and they think that's fine. So everyone else in the group might see that as a weakness and say, okay, well, can someone please help, you know, Pat set up their PowerPoint so that it can like their slides can look as nice as everybody else's and be willing to vote on disagreements as needed you will probably have four or five people in your group obviously if you have four then you could be voting two two um, but then someone might just have to make an executive decision but if you have five then you should be able to get a majority um, don't avoid unpleasant group activities i know that might sound a little weird but if you're in a group with your friends and stuff, the actual working part and the project part might be the unpleasant activity that you need to get done. So you can't avoid the unpleasantness of working if you're having like too much fun in your group. And sometimes that undesirable group activity might be, you know, voting and trying to come up with a compromise if people are, you know, having disagreements on the correct course of action. You know, don't dominate group conversation or assignments. Some people, they honestly, they just have that kind of personality. They are very loud. They are very extroverted. Um, if you know that you are one of those people, just please make sure that sometimes you take a step back and say, okay, am I giving everyone else in our group equal chance to discuss an equal opportunity to have a say, or am I domineering the entire conversation? Because sometimes people do it accidentally, like it happens. I have known people like that. Um, but sometimes people do it just to like be rude. And if it's just one person in the group, maybe you take everyone else to the side and say, hey, we need to call them out on this so that we can all have a say. Um, don't be one of those jokesters who tries to sidetrack group meetings. It's totally okay to have fun and try to, you know, have fun and make memes and jokes and stuff in like group meetings and whatnot, but do not constantly be out to sidetrack people and get people off track, you know. For this project, public speaking is not a class that everyone enjoys. A lot of people are really intimidated by it. So, and they wanna do well in it. So if you're just out here trying to get everyone off track, then that is doing a disservice to them and yourself. Because if you get a crap grade and then all of your group mates are really unhappy because you were sidetracking them all the time, then, you know, that's on you. Um, don't fail to complete things that you said you would do. Obviously, this is kind of a life general thing. If you said you would do something, then do it. So if you said that you would bring a flash drive to class with the PowerPoint on it because you guys did it in Microsoft, then do it. If you said you would finish out your slides by this date, then get them done. You know, if you say something, follow through. And then don't destroy the group harmony with attitudes about previous experiences. So I'm sure we have all had a really crappy group experience. You know, that's just how life works. Sometimes we have to work with people who we just don't get along with. Um, so don't come into this particular project with the point of view that, like, oh, this is going to suck. My group mates are going to be terrible. I'm going to end up doing all the work and nobody is going to get any work done or they're not going to let me have a say or these people are just like, you know, blah, 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 whatever. 
try to come into it with a clean slate saying, you know, these people are all here for a reason. We want to do good on this. You know, we may not know each other well yet, depending on when we do this in the semester, but we are all here going to try our best to get this done in the least painful way possible, right? Um, there's different types of group presentations, different styles you guys can do. You can have a debate uh, where you have a couple people, a couple group members on each side going back and forth uh, with their different points of view. You can have a forum, which is more of a Q&A session, which is really hard to do um, at the community college level because you'd have to have confederates in the audience where you like hand out question or yeah, hand out questions beforehand. But I mean, it is doable. You still just have to be talking yourself for the designated amount of time. You can do a panel, which is kind of a dis more of a discussion amongst yourselves. It's kind of similar to debate, um, but panel, it's a debate. I guess they're both pretty structured, but panel, you're typically all on one side, but you each have your own specific area of expertise. And then your symposium, I always call this the wrong name. I think I call it a like synopsium for like two years or something. Um, but your symposium, so many speeches on different aspects of the topic, which is the easiest, which is the one that people typically do the most. So if we're giving a speech on Bigfoot, then Sally is going to do the intro and maybe also the conclusion. And Jim is going to do Bigfoot eating habits. And Josh is going to do Bigfoot like geographic range. Geographical range? I don't know what the word is for that. It's hunting grounds, I guess. And uh, Susan's going to talk about the best ways of hunting Bigfoot. And those are all going to be a little mini speech on the overarching topic of Bigfoot. So when you actually go to give your speech, does your group have a delivery plan? So do you have your purpose? Your purpose is to inform your audience about blank. Do you actually have your oral content or what you're going to say? Uh, you've had to, you will have had to have turned in an outline and references before you give your speech. So yes, you will have things to say. Has everyone agreed on how to dress and is everyone dressed appropriately? Were you guys going with a theme? So our Bigfoot hunting group, or our, I guess just our Bigfoot group, is our Bigfoot hunting person gonna come dressed in camo? And our Bigfoot geographical range person gonna come dressed like, I don't know, something that would be appropriate for that and whatnot. Or if you're talking, if your group's talking about the, how to, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? like how to make food and how to cook and stuff and the different things that are relevant to that. Like here's how you actually use a whisk and here's why you add an acid to your uh, meat marinade and blah, 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 blah. You guys all gonna come dressed like cooks. I think that'd be funny. Um, do you know which room you're going to be in? If you are in the in-class person, my room is AP 114, which is the room we always have class in. So that will be the room you're presenting in. Um, if you're doing the online version of the class, then your room will be whichever room that you stick your computer or laptop in and have your camera pointing. So you guys all need to go through and make sure that your background is not distracting. So I would probably take my pictures in my apron down or hang something up behind me so it was less distracting. Do you have your visuals or your visual aid? So if I'm talking about microphones or whatever, I might pull up my microphone as a visual aid. Do you have, uh, do you know how you can do your delivery? Which order you're gonna do your delivery? So who's talking first, second, third? Who's doing the intro? Who's doing the conclusion? How are we gonna transition all those? And then last but not least, your rehearsal. Have you practiced? You should all do at least one or two practice runs before you record your speech uh, for the online and one or two practice runs before you come and give your speech in class. Um, it just makes it so much easier because then you have an idea of what your time is, if you need to talk faster or slower, it gives you a chance to practice to remember saying your citations out loud. So all those good things. 
So some things to think about. So what kind of leader and what kind of follower are you? Which type of group presentation do you think would be most effective for the topics that you guys are thinking about and why? Um, I had a really good group speech that was actually debate style. It was very, very satirical because they both, uh, each side in that group took a very conservative stance and a very liberal stance. And they were talking about like, I think representation in the news. Um, but obviously it was very, very overplayed and very satirical because their point was you have to come together a little bit more in the middle and, you know, check the facts for yourself. And most people are not as hardline as people are showing on the news or whatever. And then, so you have your ideal style that might use, is there a way you could go about using a different style of presentation? So is there a way they could have done that in symposium or a way they could have done that in panel instead of a debate, so on and so forth. So if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot me a message on Canvas or an email. You guys know where to find me on campus. If you're on campus, if not, easiest way is Canvas or email. So. I will see you guys soon. Have a wonderful rest of your day.